This is the story about our train ride from Toronto, Ontario, westward across the plains of the Midwest, and across the Rocky Mountains all the way to the city of Vancouver on the west coast of Canada. In early May of 2007, after canceling our plans to make the same trip the fall before because of Great Grandma Drew's surgery, the four of us are finally here in Toronto, ready to board via rails the Canadian, bright and early tomorrow morning. Our cab driver for the ride from the hotel was a funny guy from India who told us that there are two things that are found in every country of the world. Potatoes and Indians. I am from New Delhi, the capital of India. No kidding, how long have you been in this country? Almost seven years now. Wow, do you have your papers? Uh, yes, I do. <laughs> That's why I'm driving a cab. <laughs> <laughs> he was good company and a good driver. And even though the commuter rush hour traffic was heavy into downtown Toronto, he got us to the station with plenty of time to spare. There was a bit of a wait before we were called to be boarded, and it gave us a chance to consider the other passengers that we knew were going to be on the same train with us. We'd been told that, unlike an airliner that had only so many seats, this train could be made as large as needed to accommodate any number of passengers who wanted to buy tickets. We'd soon learn that our train would include about 30 cars, and that there would be three diner cars and four dome cars to satisfy the needs of this entire crowd. Oh yes, that was just the right amount. It was obvious that Via Rail had done this same thing many times before. Getting settled in was fun, and of course we all knew that our quarters were going to be on the small side. Uncomfortable? No, not really. Besides, there were perks that we were about to experience that would more than compensate for any minor inconveniences along the way. Even though the real scenery on this trip is well west of Toronto, we of course wasted no time finding our way to one of the dome cars, just to see what they were like. It turned out that our cabins were about three or four cars from both the dome ahead of us and also from the one behind. Walking any distance at all was difficult for especially Great Grandma, and this floor just refused to stand still. But that problem was solved by a special wheelchair made just for these narrow passageways on the train and provided as a courtesy by Via Rail. Their policy was that the chair always be handled by one of the crew, and so we got to know our porter Mario pretty well during his shift with us on the leg between Toronto and his home in Winnipeg, Manitoba. You guys all fluent in French? What's that? Are you all yes. fluent in French? Most of us. Ah. Well, you, you, uh, you, in the fi last 15, 20 years, maybe 20 years, you had to be bilingual to get it to work here. So. Oh. So my guess is, my guess is that your schools do a lot more with bilingual, don't they? In other words, um, well, let's say we have quite a few um, Quebec sure. employees. Sure. Like my partner there, Daniel. Yeah. He's from there, but there's a lot of Franco Manitobans where I'm from. Huh. So maybe about 100,000 population. Oh, wow. I'll, uh, <clears throat> I'm actually from a small town outside Winnipeg mm -hmm. called La Brokery. Yeah. Maybe a town of 560 population. Really? Wow. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot of those small towns that are French rural oh, com communities. Wait, so it's all Would French schools. Yeah, those one will fall down. Yeah. And then after that, when I, my dad was actually I, I my French teacher too. Turn, yeah. Oh, okay. Now you're saying that because he taught you or because he taught in the school? He taught me actually. Yeah. I see. He taught me, well, I'm sorry, in school. Like he was a teacher. Oh, he was, a, he teacher, was a farmer yeah. at the same time. So oh, okay. He was a busy man. I see. He speaks French to his cows? Um, yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm there was a certain word that we would use when we wanted the cows to come in from the pasture to the farm and it was in French and as soon as you said that they came running because they, oh they knew it was feeding time. Alright, you gonna tell us the word? 
plus, 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 plus. Real? Yeah. Whoa. And the translation is? It actually doesn't really, well, it takes, it take one's place, maybe? Ah. In the barn. Cows are pretty smart. Yeah. Smarter than people make them look. Well, then you uh, couldn't speak English to the cows and have to be responsible. If you all confused. I'm sure we could have taught him in English too. Yeah. It could have been bilingual cows. <laughs> right. The view from these air-conditioned dome cars was everything we'd been led to expect. But Great Grandma and Grandpa didn't spend much time there after our first day out. It was a long way for both of them to go each time, and the scenery was basically the same from their cabins as it was from here. We'd been told that the meals on the train were memorable experiences in themselves, and our first lunch was coming up. In order to accommodate everyone with only three dining cars on this train, it was necessary to schedule three sittings for lunches and dinners. Mario already knew our meal schedule, and he never missed his cue to provide the needed transportation for Great Grandma. This is your second call for dinner in the dining car, second call for dinner. Let's just tell it the way it is. The food was without a doubt one of the high points of our trip. We all marveled at how they were able to provide so many choices and then to prepare it with such high quality in what must have been a very cramped kitchen space. The service was professional at all times and, well, the view out of the window was Canada. Oh, logging. Okay, logging. You guys see the tracks out there? Yeah. Cities of the world. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> Can I ask what your name is, please? Josef Kukman. I'm going to have trouble with the spelling, so that's going to be difficult. Yes. Can you oh, explain? I could give you the card, then you know how to spell it. Well, it's all this. When I see things, I have to ask questions. How long? How fast does it go? Now, also, how much fuel does this, uses three engines consume per hour? I don't know, but I try to find out. Uh, at least I tried to ask. How long is this train? Uh, how long? Well, I did not measure it exactly. I asked how many cars they have added then the cars for uh, the luggage and the engines. And then it should be approximately 750 meter. That, was, that were my calculations. I did not measure it with the tape or something like that. But I was curious. I like to know. Thank you very much. As we neared the end of Ontario's continuous scene of lakes and forests on our second day, we were surprised when one of the train's supervisors came up into our dome to announce that the train was slowing to pass through a forest fire that was burning ahead of us. If you listen carefully, you can just hear the train's whistle blowing for safety in the distance as the locomotives pass through the smoke from the fire. 
They're creosote. They burn just like nothing. They'll actually burn so hot that it'll be just. It won't even leave much ash. It'll just leave a shadow where those are. Winnipeg's your home, right, Mario? Yeah, it sure is. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So you'll be there for what, two days and then what? No, I'll probably be there until about Sunday. Ah, okay. And then another so, train comes through? Yeah. I'm. It's home. So usually, actually, like right now, I'm on call for another three weeks. And really? Then I'll be assigned. Ah. And then I'll do my four days on. I'll get five to eight days off. Very cool. So, Very cool. Yeah. How many years before your pension? Oh, you're going to make it? Ah, uh, we'll see. Hopefully Via makes it. <laughs> I hope so too. I don't, we'll see. I was supposed to be here only one year and now I'm on 10, so. Uh, oh, good for you. Yeah. You're doing a great job. Thank you. There she is. In fact, Mario wouldn't be the only one getting off our next stop at Winnipeg. All of the Via Rail crew, every last one of them would get off and a new crew would take over for the second half of our journey to Vancouver. <laughs> okay. What do you want to say to the people in Rochester, New York? Hey, <laughs> I want to go back to Yonkers. They were mine, Rochester, hey? Right? <laughs> and I'm going home to see my wife and mistress. Oh. But my wife is my mistress. All right. Okay. All thanks, right. For, thanks for the good service. Anytime. We're getting this right down pat. Yeah, yeah. He's, Walks uh, and all. He's finally getting it right. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That's not the way to approach a man who's got control of where I'm going. That's right. And That's how true. I'm getting there. <laughs> yeah. Well, you ought to have the route memorized by now. Yeah. Yeah. Careful with that, do we? <laughs> I've been uh, scrubbing my uh, my uh, arms against the wall here, this textured wall, and I'm beginning to think that probably we could tell which of you has seniority by how frayed your shirts are. <laughs> That's true. They give us new shirts every month. Oh, do they? Yeah. Well, I see that you've already cut yours off, so I'm assuming you've been here a while. <laughs> I have rough skin between my. Uh, yeah, I see the calluses. On my elbows. Right. right. <laughs> okay.
The stop at Winnipeg was originally scheduled to be for about an hour and a half, and we were told that there would be opportunities to shop at a sort of a mini-mall near the station. Unfortunately, we were running quite late by now, and the crew was doing what it could to catch up. We'd have only about a half hour during the crew change to stretch our legs a bit before we were off to the next major stop at Edmonton. Apparently, Via Rail doesn't own the tracks we are riding on, but instead rents the use of them from CN Rail, which is a freight hauling operation. We've many times found ourselves sighted from the main line and having to wait for however long it took for a CN freight train to pass us by. Well, that certainly isn't a problem for any of us who are taking three days to cross the entire country, but it does explain our being a bit behind schedule as we are, and our having only a half hour at these big stops, rather than the hour and a half we were expecting. The nice thing about starting this journey in Toronto and heading westward is that as beautiful as the countryside is in the Great Lakes region, the very best scenery is saved for last. We are west of Edmonton now, and our attention has been fixed for some time on the horizon ahead as the first snow-capped peaks of the Rocky Mountains begin to appear. We'll arrive at Vancouver early tomorrow morning. And so our time for the rest of this day will be spent enjoying the most extraordinary landscape that most of us have ever seen. It was right about here that someone spotted a herd of bighorn mountain sheep moving quickly up and away from the tracks in the distance. We were a little surprised to not see much wildlife anywhere along the way, until it was explained that the sound of the train's engines ahead of us would have scared most animals away by the time our cars got to where they'd been. We never heard the engines from way back here, so it was easy to forget just how loud they could be. From Tuesday morning in Toronto to Friday morning here in Vancouver, British Columbia. Three days that none of us will ever forget. We don't realize it yet, but our systems have by now become acclimated to the rocking movement of the train. Two days from now, Great Grandpa and I will be standing in a line waiting to buy some ice cream, and I'll turn to him and swear that the concrete floor under us is moving.
If we went directly from here to the airport and flew home, we'd all agree that our trip had been a full one. But our flight won't be until Sunday. We still have two more days to enjoy one of the most beautiful cities in all of Canada. Vancouver Harbor is a busy place, and there's lots of development going on just up the street from our hotel. Vancouver is a port of call for the many cruise ships plying up and down the west coast, and apparently May is a busy time in the cruise ship business. Our hotel is part of the Canada Place Complex, where they all tie up and let passengers on and off. In the two days we were here, we counted five different cruise ships moored alongside our hotel, and when we boarded one of the tour buses for a view of the city, most of the rest of the passengers were on a brief stopover from an Alaskan cruise that had begun in San Diego just a few days before. Western Bayshore Hotel Resort Marina next stop. No stay at Vancouver can be complete without somehow getting on the water. And so our Saturday evening would be spent on a harbor dinner cruise, complete with live music and a relaxing two-hour ride up the Burrard Inlet. If it's true that the measure of a good time is in how sad we are to see it end, then we should have been very sad indeed this evening, because this past week has been one of the best vacation experiences that any of us can remember. But we weren't sad. God willing, there'll be other times like this again. And the memories created will, for each of us, remain forever.